Okay, glad you guys could hop on here tonight. Um, I have just a, a doom, 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 of things to talk about really quick. And there was no Monday, Monday motivation yesterday. I think Jen Viev is maybe in Australia. And also um, there's, uh, yesterday was President's Day. I'm not sure what the reason was. But anyway, I have something else that we're going to look at tonight. But what I decided to do, um, since, uh, since we actually have an event going on right now that there is almost zero participation on, I decided that I tried to figure out this since the event started, okay, where I missed the boop. And so I put a lot of prayer into it, especially yesterday. And I think I know, and we're going to remedy it. It doesn't have to be for this event, but we're going to remedy the event, whatever that is. Okay. And this is what I came up with. <clears throat> While... <laughs> I kind of want to do two or three of these things before we start the video that we're going to listen to together. And then I'm going to kind of give you a list, maybe over in the chat, of things to do while you're listening to the video, because it's a video you can totally listen, listen to, you don't have to watch, if you guys are okay with that. So first of all, and if you can't do this, if you're not dual, if you don't have dual, um, what am I trying to say, devices right now, like where you can do the Zoom and you can also jump on YouTube. Do the Zoom and also look at Facebook. Then you need to get something where you can either take notes on a phone or you can take notes uh, on a notebook because th these are gonna be really quick. If you have never, I'm, I'm, this is gonna be what you call empower the people. If you are not currently subscribed to my YouTube channel, that could very well cause you to be like, did you post the call from last week? where's the link to the call and all these things. Sometimes I don't post the link to it on the same day that it loads to YouTube because sometimes I don't even know. Um, I have to walk away from my computer while it loads because for whatever reason, it's dinosaur time and it seems to take forever for it to load. So sometimes it'll load and a day will pass before I walk back past it and go, oh, I should grab that link and share it. So you don't need me if you know my, the link to my YouTube channel. So if you just go on YouTube, and you can do it right now, if you are dual device, go onto YouTube, type in Lori Harrison. It's going to pull up. I'm going to see exactly what it pulls up so I can guide you from there. Hmm. Lots of videos with me in it and a channel at the top that looks like, at least that's what it did on mine, I can't promise. It's got my red hair glowing. So you're gonna click the channel, and once you're there, you're gonna click subscribe. Now, let me see exactly in case you're getting lost on me and see how to do this, because it's gonna look different to me because that's my channel and I'm logged in. Okay, but do you get Um, you may have to set it to notify you. That I don't know. I know that I do get notification. Did you say you do? Do you or you do? Okay. Yes, that's the channel. All right. Um, so do that first and foremost. That way, anytime I post any kind of video, even if I went live somewhere or whatever and decide to share it, if you want, I mean, not everybody wants to be subscribed to that, but that way, if you're looking, so that's empowerment number one. That way you don't have to ask, if you're one of those independent people like me, you don't got to ask nobody. You'd be like, I know where to go to look for that. That's first and foremost if you're taking notes. Make sure you know my YouTube channel. Um, if you don't have the link to this call saved in your notes, you need to do it. Okay. Now I'm going to actually grab that. I shared it with Jetty a minute ago. This is gonna have more than just that. Oh, actually, I didn't grab that. Hold your horses one second, <laughs> as they say. I'm gonna, the notes that I'm talking through are about to, they're coming to you in the chat. Three, two, one, there's that. The notes for the call, and I'm gonna grab the link because I did just share it with someone, so it's easy for me to grab it. 
in case you need. Speaking of notifications, my phone is going doop, doop. Okay, uh, Jetty, do you mind grabbing the link for the call? Um, oh, here we go, here we go. Maybe. Here it is, Never mind. If you have a notes place in your phone so that you can be empowered to always have the link handy. Okay, that's number two. Also, while we're sitting here, let's, since we've moved time and date or time and, yeah, time and day of the week, let's set alarms in our phone, however early you think. You know, give yourself a 10 minute head up, heads up. I'm one of those people that since I'm doing the call, Sometimes I need like an hour heads up and a five minute heads up. Just helps me. That way I go, oh girl, get your makeup on or oh girl's time. <laughs> so I don't like run into something else. That's just because my life tends to be busy, busy. So let's go set alarms in our phone right now. And then if I'm going too fast, let me know. That doesn't mean I'm gonna slow down. Oh girl, get your gloves on. That's a, that's a good one. Okay. One last thing before we actually jump over to our video that we're going to watch is in a part of the prayers that I have prayed recently, uh, you're never going to believe who answered this prayer for us was a butterfly and she didn't even know I was praying it. And that was little Miss Brianne Coolidge. Um, she actually posted something in the jewel group this week for onboarding and it was a PDF and it was very, all the things it is now living in the butterfly and alumni groups as a file that I posted 10 minutes ago. Okay. It's called, let me see. The name of it is health and time freedom launch. It would be something great to share with your newbies. Now, I'm gonna tell you why right now because I believe that for the most part, many of you are dealing with one stumbling block and one stumbling block alone. And that might, not, that might be fear of how to move forward, fear of leadership, fear of, I don't know what to do with them once I've, you know, like, it's like catching a fish and reeling it in and then you don't know how to fry it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like somebody shows some interest and then you're like, okay. And then you even give them a code, they sign up for free. And then you're like, okay, best of luck. <laughs> no, it doesn't have to be that way. It's not going to be that way. And this file, I believe would be something that you could send to newbies. When you open it up, you're going to be like, ah, it's perfect. Perfect to print out. Perfect to send to someone in the form of an email. If they're in a team page with you, perfect to tag them in. It probably needs to become um, pinned on the butterfly page or I'm going to figure out a way to make it where it's more easily accessible. That way they have something colorful, beautiful, that gives them something to sit down and do that gets them interactive. If you are a person who's lived very long, you know, if you'll think about it, you're going to know intuitively that the very best way to get somebody, including yourself, let's talk about ourselves, to get somebody doing something is to get them doing something. So if you are like, I kind of want to book a cruise or I'm thinking about whatever. Once you have started the process, it becomes easier. It's almost like the leap is just beginning it. This gets people engaged and going, Oh, okay. First things first, make sure you have a okay, subscription order. Okay. Yeah, I did that. And if nothing else, it causes questions back and forth, interaction. What, what is a subscription order? Set expectations and let your why drive you. It's beautiful, it's perfect. If you can't find it, tell me it's files just posted in both of those pages. Okay, that's what's up right now. So onboarding file, I put in parentheses, answer to prayer. 
Now, also bumped on both pages, and this is gonna be the last thing I talk about, I think, is the three-day toolbox from weeks ago, and then we went over it again. Mm. That Jennifer Leith, when she, she talked about, she actually got on a Zoom with us and discussed it. Then we actually watched her actually doing a call for corporate discussing it. And if you are like me at all, you were probably like, ah, yes, that's perfect. Casual language and tone, the way I want to interact with people, very real. And I believe the missing piece, which I'm going to actually take my own responsibility for this two weeks ago when I was going to actually hit hard, hit home hard on this particular thing prior to the three day sample event that we're doing right now, two weeks ago, that particular zoom, I canceled. Okay. That would have been the perfect timing to start the inviting process. It would have been the perfect time to, I, I put the notes out there for you to do it, but there's something about like what we're doing right now, do it, go subscribe, go set an alarm, bah, 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 right? Okay. So that particular toolbox has all that a person would need to get people sampling, sampling and in a sampling group. Now, I hope I've done it justice because to me, I have hit on, after much prayer, I have hit on all the things that I believe are the answer to what maybe have you stalled out if you're stalled out, what maybe is why that group is like right now, like there's lots of stuff. I mean, every single day, three times a day, there's testimonies being posted, there's product spotlights, there's all the things that should make us all be going, self-included, I wish I had people in there doing it, right? So I could have and almost decided to go, I'm not doing those anymore because probably one of, one of my biggest pet peeves is wasted time. Can't stand it. If I'm going to waste time, I want to do it on purpose. You know, I want to like veg out on the couch instead of wasted time that I'm regretful for later. And so I could have said like, well, not doing that again, but I, my heart believes in it. I connect with it. I believe that the truth is, is that we have to keep marching on and you have to go, okay, this will be fruitful if, if, if and when I decide that I'm going to do the things. So moving on, um, I put some wording, just last minute wording that I, in, in the chat here, and it's in my notes in my phone, for what I want you to do while we listen to Brene Brown right now. We're going to listen to It's Not the Critics That Count. It's a 20-minute video, and it's one of the most, it's, it was one of the most life-changing videos that I ever listened to. I wanted to literally um, show it to every person who would listen to it because it took me from the place of operating in fear of people to going, you know what? They're in the cheap seats. Anybody who criticizes me is not in here trying it with me because if they were trying it, they would don't have time. <laughs> or energy, and you have respect for people who are trying things that are a little bit out, outside the ordinary. I don't criticize people who are trying to say things outside the ordinary because I've been doing it, and I know, first of all, if I'm going to say anything to someone that's a correction, it's for their own good. Like, I, I might correct a typo or something like that. Not correcting them, but I might say, hey, girl, there's, I saw something that helped you be better, rather than be like, different than criticism. You guys understand what I'm saying. So I love this video. I could put it on replay and listen to it again and again and again to renew my mind on the regular. While you're listening, if you want to take the paragraph that I sh shared here in the notes and invite to on the 20th, after this three days of nothing burger we have going on right now, Okay, after this three days on the 20th, so the three days is 17th, 18th, the 19th, so it'll be over with tomorrow, but the 20th, which will be Thursday, um, there is a graphic in the butterfly page that looks like this, right here. It's got Jennifer Lees, and it's a quadrant of four people, a 20-minute VIP event for anyone looking for more. That is what I want you to focus on tonight while you listen. 
This is not specifically for our team. This is not specifically corporate sponsored, but Jen has told me she's got a Zoom ID there where you can give someone the Zoom ID. If I were you, I would um, explain to them after they tell you they are interested, you need to explain to them how to get on a Zoom. I just talked to her before we got on our call and there's a possibility, probably a likelihood I would say, that she's gonna turn it into not just a Zoom, but a Zoom stream, streaming either on Facebook or on YouTube. Be watching <laughs> under where I've posted that graphic on Thursday. So if I get that information, it would be easier to either do a watch party on your wall and invite people or send people the link to the watch party or to whoever's wall it ends up on. I know that that is, um, Yay. <laughs> oh, good. See, I don't ever, I don't ever count out a drip group. The possibilities in a drip group, which is what the beauty inside and out group is. Uh, I've told my teenage daughter, she tells, she comes in there. She's like, I have a friend who has shown some interest and she's my daughter. So I'm going to give her the very best advice I have. And I say, put her in this group and let it bloom now that's not to say we can't that we don't follow up we have to do that there's too much distraction in this day and age follow-up is crucial needed you have to follow up with people and say hey just reminding you one to remind you you said you were putting stuff in your shopping cart blah 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 blah. i'm i'm easily bounced from one thing to the other and i like my life that way and i wouldn't want anybody telling me not to be that way but we all are we have to remind people and if and most people are glad that you do and um, remind them. Okay. Okay. How you do a watch party on your pe page? Good question. And I promise we're getting to the Brene thing in one sec. Okay. So on your Facebook wall, so this is my profile. I'm going to scroll down to where I, it looks like I'm going to make a post. I'm doing this from scratch here and I'm going to click on inside there like I'm about to type something when I do oh, photo video tag friends that little bottom part comes up underneath sorry I'm trying not to make it okay so I, I touched right here so that that would oh oh what's on your mind um here we go so I touched like I was going to type and that brought down where there's the ability to add a photo, tag friends. When you grab it, oh shoot y'all, I'm sorry. When you grab it and go down below on my phone, it's below feeling activity. You go a little further, there are more options and you'll see the little purple popcorn watch party. You click watch party and you're gonna watch for the name. Like usually I have to go see where it's going on live. If it's Jennifer Leaf, and let's say she named it, um, health, health and Happiness Freedom Hour. I'm making something up. So you're gonna type in the name in that search bar and it's gonna pull up videos that are going on <laughs> and then you choose it. And then you hit, I don't know if it's enter, send, whatever. And then underneath that, there will be invite, invite. So if it's people you've already talked to and they're on standby, you can go find their name and invite them and they can be part of it. You don't want to invite them late. You don't want them missing the first part because then they, it's not like starting from the beginning. Once you've started a watch party, it starts playing and it, if people join midstream, they get midstream on that helpful so you want to have people on the ready if you just feel like you got a squirrely moment you want to add people at the last minute that you haven't invited because sometimes it'll pull up people and i'll think yeah i'll invite her and see if she gets you know and sometimes also as you're doing a watch party you have to stay on it you need to stay on it yourself you can't be jumping around to other things let the watch party go on and there will be a chat a potential chat um, going on underneath the video and it's your people that are watching it with you who are chatting. It's not necessarily everybody who's watching the video. So that I, I didn't know any of that, by the way, 
The first time I ever did a watch party, I had no idea what I was doing. I saw a watch party. I was like, yeah, I'm going to try it. <laughs> That's how I jump into things. And then I'm not worried about being foolish. I mean, it happens sometimes, but that's not my concern. So, um, so I encourage you to do that. And if that was not a good enough explanation, I guarantee there's a YouTube tutorial that teaches you how to do that. Um, can you set up a watch party before it starts? Yeah. I don't know the answer to that. I've never tried that. Maybe somebody else knows. Okay. Now we're jumping on to the video that we're going to do together while we're doing this video. Again, as a reminder, you're going to be inviting people to Thursday night. I would start with low hanging fruit. Don't tell anybody I called them that. I would start with people who you have discussed Plexus with before who have even said, yeah, I think I want to do that. And then, you know, you didn't follow up with them or they drifted off the map or whatever. And you, you could say something to them like that to them, what I put in the notes, because I don't like being very salesy. So, hey, I want to invite you to hop on. Uh, a 20 minute thing that's happening Thursday. I know we've discussed this before. If you think you might be able to hop on, let me know. I want to send you the link and really just find out more about your health goals and send the graphic with it if you want to. You can screen capture the graphic. All right, now for real. I'm sharing screen. Do I have any questions before we start watching this or as we start watching this? If you do, type them in the chat. Now we're sharing screen. <laughs> I knew I had a lot to go on, but whoops, that's the wrong one. Wrong screen. Hold on. Share. Okay. It's still not the one I wanted. Okay. Yeah. Um, here we go, maybe. I'm gonna move this over. If somebody can let me know if you can't hear it once it gets started. I do not own the rights to this video. Okay, so this past weekend, a really good friend of mine who lives in New York called and said, how are you feeling about the 99 conference? And my answer was, what do you think is the least invasive way to extract eyeball juice from a first grader? And his response was, oh God, are you in that place? <laughs> And I said, no, really, this is, here's the idea. There is a total pink eye epidemic in my son's class. And if I could get some of the juice, I could give myself pink eye, which would be a legitimate excuse not to go. And I could even like, you know, do a selfie with like a big eye and then it would be legit. And he said, I thought you were excited. And I said, I was excited. But as I was working on my keynote, I realized that I had kind of tricked myself into believing that this was my tribe. And then I realized like my obsession with fonts doesn't really make me one of you. Um, and he said, well, why did, you know, what was going on when you thought you were one of them? And I said, I don't know, I'm gonna have to think about it. And he said, you're a researcher. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're not, you know, a creative. And I said, no, these are the creatives. These are the people that no one sat with in high school and that everybody wants to be when they grow up. Uh, I'm a researcher. No one sat with us in high school. No one still sits with us. Uh, so I thought about it and I thought, okay, so I'm a researcher. I study connection. I study vulnerability. I study love. And then I realized why I thought you were my tribe. I think it's because design is a function of connection. There is nothing more vulnerable than creativity. And what is art if it's not love? So it made sense to me to be here. 
And then I thought, okay, 99% perspiration. They said, don't talk about inspirational stuff, talk about the how to's. So, you know, my name, sometimes I name my keynote presentations, things that'll make me feel better about being here. So this one's called Sweaty Creatives. Um, <laughs> because I know what it means to be a sweaty creative. Um, because I create all the time when I write, the way I translate my research, when I talk. And I know what the perspiration feels like. And so what I wanna talk about today is the perspiration that no one talks about very often. And that's not the perspiration from the hard work and the laborious part of creating, it's the perspiration from fear, from the cold sweat, the stuff that pops up on our eyebrows when it's not supposed to be there because we're presenting an idea or talking about something that we care about. And then we're begging our body not to sweat like when they said, we're filming you against black, could you wear something else? I'm like, uh, no. Uh, <laughs> that 99% perspiration thing, I'm down with that. I got that. I won't be wearing, I'll be wearing, uh, yes, my option will be navy. Uh, so I know about sweaty creatives. So I want to tell you about something that changed my life as a creative person. And it's a quote from Theodore Roosevelt, and it has completely, I mean, I know it sounds cheesy and cliche to think a quote can change your life, but sometimes when you hear something, when you need to hear it and you're ready to hear it, something shifts inside of you. And so my story is that I'm, I am a researcher and I never thought I would have a big public career. Um, and so I did a TED talk that went very viral. And in the wake of that, I was kind of everywhere for a couple of months on every CNN.com, NPR, it was everywhere and something I wasn't used to. And the marching orders from my therapist and my husband were do not read the comments online. <laughs> so I read all the comments online. Um, and so one morning I woke up and there were two or three new articles out and I started reading the comments and they were devastating. Um, they weren't about my work, they were about me. They were super personal. And they were the things that creative people play in their mind and then give up doing what they really wanna do. Like if I asked every single one of you, you would try, what would you try if you knew people would never say this about you? What would, that, what would this be? It would, those were the comments that morning. Um, of course she embraces imperfection. What choice does she have? Look, what she, look how she looks. Um, I feel sorry for her kids. Um, less research, more Botox. Um, just mean personal attacks. The things that really up until that moment had inspired me to stay very small in my life and my career, just so I could avoid those things. So that morning, Steve and the kids leave. I stay home. I get on the couch and I watch eight hours of Downton Abbey. <laughs> and when it's over, I don't want to turn off Downton Abbey. Because I then, because the minute you turn off Downton Abbey, then it's like soccer practice and dinner and back to the mean people. And maybe, should I get more talks? And maybe, you know, maybe if I stand still when I talk. Um, so I get out my laptop and I do a search for who was president in the United States during the Downton Abbey era. Have you ever done that? Like you, you're numbing with TV or a movie and so when it's over, you just like stay in that space by like learning more about the actors and what's going on. Uh, I've been doing this long enough to know this is like, you're laughing with me, not at me. Uh, so I put it in and Theodore Roosevelt comes up and a quote comes up and I read it. And this is what it says. It's a quote from a speech that he gave in the early 1900s at the Sorbonne. And a lot of people call it the man in the arena speech. And this is the passage that changed, changes my life. It's not the critic who counts. It's not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done it better. The credit belongs to the person who's actually in the arena, whose face is marred with blood and sweat and dust, who at the best, in the end, knows the triumph of high achievement and who at worst, if he fails, he fails daring greatly. 
So the moment that I read that, I closed my laptop and this is what shifted in me. Three huge things. First, I spent the last 12 years studying vulnerability. And that quote was everything I know about vulnerability. It is not about winning. It's not about losing. It's about showing up and being seen. The second thing, this is who I want to be. I want to create. I want to make things that didn't exist before I touched them. I want to show up and be seen in my work and in my life. And if you're going to show up and be seen, there is only one guarantee, and that is you will get your ass kicked. That is the guarantee. That's the only certainty you have. If you're going to go in the arena and spend any time in there whatsoever, especially if you've committed to creating in your life, you will get your ass kicked. So you have to decide at that moment, I think for all of us, if courage is a value that we hold, this is a consequence. You can't avoid it. The third thing, which really set me free, and I think Steve, my husband, would argue has made me somewhat dangerous, is kind of a new philosophy about criticism, which is this. If you're not in the arena also getting your ass kicked, I'm not interested in your feedback. I, you know, if you have constructive information, feedback to give me, I want it. And you know, I'm an academic. I'm hardwired for wrestling around with stuff like that. You say, hey, you forgot all this literature. Or, hey, you should have done this. Or terrible sentence construction over here. Like, let's go. Let's, let's do it. I love that. But if you're in the cheap seats, not putting yourself on the line and just talking about how I could do it better, I'm in no way interested in your feedback. So I know about the sweaty creative. And so what I want to do today is I want to talk very specifically about the arena. This is where, this is where we sweat. How many of you know this feeling by just looking at the picture? <laughs> yeah, show of hands. How many of you know this feeling? So this is what we do down here. Like, I don't know what you do down here. But what I, I, I set up camp down here. I like string up twinkle lights. I order takeout food. Uh, I live down here sometimes just dreaming about the day that I come up and how awesome it's going to be. Like, but I, I stay down here a lot. And here's what we do. What the ring is right there. You can see it. The light's there. And the fear is this. I'm scared. A lot of self-doubt comparison, anxiety, uncertainty. And so what do most people do when they're walking into the arena and those things are going to greet them at up top? What do you do? You armor up, right? This is where I would imagine the old days that they got all their stuff on. But God, that stuff is heavy. And that stuff is suffocating. And the problem is when you armor up against vulnerability, you shut yourself off. And I've said this to audiences before, but I have never said it to an audience where it is more true than today, the second. When you armor up, you armor up in this hallway, you shut yourself off from everything that you do and that you love. Because vulnerability is certainly a part of fear and self-doubt and grief and uncertainty and shame, but it's also the birthplace of these. It's the birthplace of love, of belonging, of joy, trust, empathy, creativity, and innovation. Without vulnerability, you cannot create. So what I think you're asked to do as a creative on a daily basis is walk through this hall, get to the top of the stairs, and get naked. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> Get naked. Get really real. Put yourself out there and walk out there so people can see you and see what you've made and see what you're doing. So when we walk out, this is what we see. Lots of seats, lots of people. But we focus in and we focus on this. The critics. I used to think the best way 
to put your work out into the world is to make sure the critics are not in the arena, mm. but you have no control over who's in the arena. And the best way I have found is to know that they're there and to know exactly what they're going to say to you. Because each of you know, the three seats that will always be taken when you walk into the arena, when you share your work with someone, the three seats that will always be taken are shame, scarcity, and comparison. Shame, completely universal human emotion. We all have it. It's that gremlin that whispers, you're not, you're not enough. Or if you're feeling pretty confident, like this is, I went through this, like in a, when Scott was talking, I went back and forth from like a, like a ping pong table with gremlins back from, oh my God, I'm not enough. I'm not enough to, I can do this. I can totally do Oh, who do you think you are? That's the other gremlin. That's how it works. Like, look at you big for your britches. Um, I, clearly have Texas gremlins. Um, I don't know that everyone says too big for their britches, but that's what my gremlins say. So shame always has a seat. The other seat that's always taken is scarcity. What am I doing that everyone, what am I doing that's original? Everyone else is doing this. 150 people are doing it who are better trained than, I'm tra than I am. What am I contributing? Does this really matter? The third C, always comparison. How many of you ever struggle with comparison? Oh my God, comparison is a nightmare. Um, you know, I made a pact not to talk to anyone in the green room because what I was afraid that I would end up doing is say, so what are you talking about? <laughs> That's interesting because I'm going first. Um, <laughs> And so if it sounds super good, and I think I suck comparatively, I may say that. <laughs> and then I'm catching a flight to Dallas. Um, comparison is always there. The fourth seat I left open for you. You gotta know who's in the fourth seat. Is it a teacher? Is it a parent? Is it a shitty ex coworker? Am I the only one that's ever had one of those? Um, the thing is, I don't care what people think. I don't worry about the critics in the arena. It sends a huge red flag up for me. We're hardwired for connection. When we stop caring what people think, we lose our capacity for connection. When we become defined by what people think, we lose our capacity to be vulnerable. Not caring what people think is its own kind of hustle. Trust me. So rather than locking these folks out from the arena, what I'm going to invite you to do this way, maybe is reserve seats for them, which doesn't seem like a good thing to do, but I have 13,000 pieces of data and I've done this work for 12 years. And what I have found and what I have learned from these folks and then try to apply it in my own life that has changed my life is to reserve a seat, to take the critics to lunch, and to simply say when I'm trying to do something new and hard and original and I'm trying to be creative and I'm trying to innovate, to say, I see you, I hear you, but I'm gonna show up and do this anyway. And I've got a seat for you and you're welcome to come, but I'm not interested in your feedback. The other piece that's tough is to me, if you're going to spend your life in the arena, if you're going to spend your life showing up, really showing up, there's a couple things that you need. The first is a clarity of values. You have to, like, I know, like, when I came out here, I knew I could screw this completely up. I could get booed off stage. Bad things could happen. But I don't have a choice because if courage is my value, I have to do this. Whether it's successful or not, it's irrelevant. Yeah. So a real clarity of values is important. The other thing is you got to have at least one person in your life who's willing to pick you up and dust you off and look at you when you fail, which hopefully you will, because if you're not failing, you're really not showing up. But who is willing to look at you when you fail and say, man, that sucked. 
Yeah, it was totally as bad as you thought. <laughs> but you were brave. And let's get you cleaned up, and because you're gonna go back in. And this is someone who loves you not despite your imperfections and vulnerabilities, but because of them. And they should have great seats in the arena. Like I forgot for five, ten, for a decade, I forgot to invite these people into my arena. Because you know, it's the old, um, I always want to say Karl Marx, but it's Groucho Marx difference. Um, <laughs> I'm a social worker. We read a lot more Karl than Groucho. Um, I didn't want to belong to a club that would let me in. I forgot to invite people because I thought if you're, if you're my fan, if you're here supporting me, how important could you be? Like, I'm trying to win over the people who hate me. You simply love me. You simply hold my hair back when I'm puking. You pay bills with me and raise kids with me. How important could you be? I'm looking for the stranger in the mall. That's who I'm trying to win over. Yes or no? Okay. The last part is... So I guess the real specific how-tos are this. The world keeps going, whether you know it or not. The critics are in the arena, whether you identify them and think about the messages that keep us small. They're there, whether you do that or not. What I have found in my life and what I've found in my research, which fueled what I did in my life, um, is that the people who have the most courage, who are willing to show up and be the most vulnerable, are the ones who are very clear about who the critics are. The ones who reserve seats for them and say, I hear you, I get it, I know where the messaging's coming from, I'm not, I'm not, in it. I'm not buying it anymore. So to get very clear, the last thing, which I think is the hardest, is this. One of these seats needs to be reserved for you. One of these seats needs to be reserved for me. I need, when we look up and we're putting an idea, our piece of art, our design forward, who do you think the biggest critic in the arena normally is? Yourself. And so, definitely me. Like, I have never watched either of those TED Talks because it's not in service of the work for me. And I try to do things that are only in service of my work because what would, what would it serve for me to watch it? I would sit there and go, oh my God, suck in your stomach. Oh my God, that's not what you were gonna say. You know, we're so self-critical. And one of the things that I think happens, and I think this happens a lot, it happens in different professions, but I think I, I see it a lot with creatives, is there is an ideal of what you're supposed to be. And what a lot of us end up doing is we orphan the parts of ourselves that don't fit what that ideal is supposed to be. And what it leaves when we orphan all those parts of us is it just leaves the critic. And so reserved in this seat is this. Where we came from, how we started, our families, that's me the oldest of course, <laughs> the lost years, <laughs> the years where I was so lost and confused and hurt and disillusioned that I thought the only path to freedom was a flock of seagulls haircut. Uh, the higher the hair, the closer to God, we say in Texas. <laughs> The people who love us, the moments that make us who we are. And in that chair should be this person. The person who believes in what we're doing and why we're doing it. And the person who says, yeah, it's so scary to show up. It feels dangerous to be seen. It's terrifying. But it is not as scary, dangerous, or terrifying as getting to the end of our lives and thinking, what if I would have shown up? What would have been different? So here's to Sweaty Creatives. Thank y'all for having me here today. I really okay. 
Tell me what. Whoop. Tell me what your the part is that resonated with you the most from that video. And then I'm going to talk to you about what resonates with me. Every single time I hear her talk, it is always, always, always about the fact that the people that are criticizing you, they don't get to carry any F and weight. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Me too. Me too. Um, when she said that that is what makes her, you know, that's what took her from what she, what she was into being dangerous. I would say uh, that's probably, um, I would say that that's probably what Jetty would say too, in regards to the realization that I was basically letting people's opinions rule my life. I grew up very much pleasing, um, trying to make other people happy and it had become almost like a value for me. And then, you know, um, when I really started learning about a few things that I'm going to touch on, and it's actually going to probably answer a couple of the, um, private messages that I have in the chat. I'm, I'm not ignoring. I'm probably about to cover that for you. And there may not completely, but we'll, we'll talk one-on-one -on -one if we need to. So see if this resonates with any, any of you. First of all, um, I'm hoping that some of you did invite some people to the group. If you didn't, if you wanted to, if you pushed the pause button and said, wait, girl, I'm going to see what this video says. That's okay. But I would really like for you to invite some people to the Thursday night thing. Um, Jennifer Leith is always a bubble of fun. Um, it will be amusing and entertaining amongst informative. So that's that plug for that. Um, the picture that she showed um, when she said she strings up twinkle lights down underneath the arena, kind of like a coliseum underneath. Um, that picture resonates different for me now than it did when I first saw the video because I literally had fear come all over me. The first time I watched her video, I knew the emotion. She said, yeah, you, I know you guys, you know, you know the feeling when you're down there basically preparing to come up when you're getting ready to do the things that make you feel vulnerable, whether it's get up in front of a group of people and speak, whether it's sending a private message to someone, the vulnerability aspect of that. And the reason, the, the reason there's this cavern of difference between how I used to look at that and watch it, by the way, watching her video the first time didn't cure this for me. Uh, a journey that I have been on and learning in those, <laughs> in those things, doing the scary things, the vulnerability, all of that. What I began to realize that is in that picture, when I was down there preparing to come up and do the vulnerable thing, message someone, post something on Facebook, something I have failed at before, something that didn't resonate with me in the past and I feel like I need to do it, because it, courage is a value. I mean, pr courage is probably at the very top of my value list. And um, I think that may be why Brene Brown and the stuff that she does really resonates with me because if I don't embody courage, I'm not doing the things that matter to me. Uh, the things that matter to me are <laughs> things that require that to be at the top of my list. I'll just put it like that. So what I realized is when I am down there in the past, when I was down there preparing my thought processes, my own frequency was and is still to this day manifesting things. Whatever I focus on when I'm down there preparing, thinking about, getting ready for, sending messages out to people, um, posting on Facebook, going to chat with a friend. Those moments when I am in that space in my head, I'm either manifesting fearful magnets that I'm sending out into the cosmos and it's collecting junk and it's pulling it back to me, or I'm manifesting hope and joy and bliss and compassion and a uh, heart filled with gladness and 
whatever. And every single time I still, to this day, I can fall in that trap if I'm not careful because it's, I think it's like human nature, I guess, for lack of a better word to trip in that hole. So when I'm about to do it, if I'm looking at it, like it's work and it's like, I don't, maybe other people value work and work ethic. And so that might be a high vibration word to you. For me, work is like homework. <laughs> chores <laughs> it's a low vibration word for me so when i'm thinking about okay uh, go sit down and do your chores or go sit down and message the people i said i was going to do it now i'm going to do it if that is the what is going on in my mind i'm manifesting rejection from people i'm met a manifesting um lack of open-heartedness from people um, if I have actually rejected people, I'm manifesting that too. Like I literally go and clear, I clear my space. I'm telling you, I'm talking about whole tones. If I'm going to actually really sit down, like probably tomorrow I'll sit down and I'll go down through my whole list of people and choose 10 or 15 who've not joined me in this journey yet. And I will send them a message. But before I do it, I will pray. I will turn on whole tones. I like where Jen Viev says that she go gets a glass glass, not a plastic one, her favorite glass to drink out of. And she creates the space, chases out the yuck, chases out the negative emotion, chases out whatever gets you there. For other people, it may be different. For me, worship. For me, whole tones. For me, prayer. For me, set in a, setting an expectation of a positive return. Because those of you who have really done heart coherence with me and really understand it, you realize that the magnetic field all around you is manifesting more of whatever you're putting out. And so if it's fear, you manifest more things to walk around being fearful of, more things to be ashamed of, more things, whatever resonates at the same level of fear. So, um, so the underneath the arena, before you come out place, I believe those of you who get on the call, I believe many of you are tender hearted, kind, compassionate people who probably had your ass kicked as a kid, probably didn't have the greatest childhood and have just done the best you can and you're survivors. And a lot of the decisions that you make during the day and a lot of the choices from your life have you in this place where you're just manifesting more things to survive. I've never said it like that. I'm going to say that again. If you're like, yeah, I'm tough. I'm a tough old nut. I've survived all this crap. And if that is the yink, yink, that's going on in your mind, it's a broken record that just repeats itself to you and you're manifesting more. She's a survivor. Okay. Survivor. It's your word. Okay. She's a survivor and she's surviving and surviving and surviving and you're surviving. Okay. Sometimes people want off of that, right? <laughs> You're like, I want to move to the next, whatever it is. Maybe I'm a thriver. I'm a thriver. I'm going to tell you, I believe with everything that is in me. Um, I believe that I, at some point mastered and I know y'all are going to be like, so what? But please hear my heart and understand this. I mastered manifesting financial freedom and I didn't do it by throwing my link on Facebook. That was a component of it. But people who truly know the ins and outs of my life, you guys know a lot of the, of it, what I share. But people who spend time with me, they're always like, girl, what is this? The Midas touch? I've had people tell me that before. You go over there and you start a guest house and boom, boom, boom. Okay. You go over the, you, um, you start sharing. Up, uh, I've, there have been several little things I don't feel like I should really talk about one way or the other, but several little business ventures that I have put my toe in and it just goes boom, boom, boom. I did not grow up like that, by the way. I will tell you, I grew up, I grew up very in lack, poverty even, um, 
um, what am I trying to say? Cut off notices, no electricity, all these things. Shame, 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 shame. Never go to the doctor because did, we couldn't, you know. My dad, however, now he, he it, was, it was easy come, easy go for him. It was the only way I know how to describe it. So my dad was a manifester. I didn't know this. He manifested, there's no telling how many hundreds of thousands a year. And he was an addict. So he, I don't think, to my knowledge, I don't think he was selling drugs to make his money. <laughs> I think he was selling cars. I wouldn't lie. I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't really know that. But he manifested way more than my mother ever knew because he was either betting on the ponies, snorting it up his nose, drinking it, women, living the free life. But I will tell you something about him that always like stood out in my mind is he never worried about anything. I don't know how he didn't because he didn't even pay his taxes. Like, <laughs> but his manifestation, I believe, was in the fact that he didn't get, he didn't start resonating at the level of shame, hurt, restriction, victim. Uh, I think it's because he didn't worry about things. I think he, it was almost like a superpower where he was like, it's easy come. Like he's not sitting there worried about not being able to pay the bills, even though he wasn't paying the bills. My mom, if my mom could get the cash from his wallet, it would go pay our electric bill. Bill, He didn't spend much time at home anyway, so he wasn't too concerned about our electricity. <laughs> he was wherever, all over the place. But I don't think he worried about much because if he got himself in a pickle, money was easy. Now I didn't see the fruit of it. I'm just explaining to you. I didn't, I grew up in poverty, even though my dad made a lot of money. I know that doesn't sound like that goes together, but it is the truth for my life. So I had to be an overcomer. I had to be creative. Even the clothes that I wore were creative. Even the Valentine box I took in seventh grade was very creative because I didn't have the stuff to make that kind of stuff. Like I'm talking about construction paper and glue. We just didn't have actually construction paper and glue is pretty much something my mom was a teacher so we did have those types of things and so creativity is where I lived but exposing my creativity to criticism has always in the past been something for me where I would pump the brakes because I had had criticism my whole life from people some very some people who meant well some people who didn't mean well some people who felt that it was constructive some people who fe felt they just wanted to you know, they wanted me to pump the brakes and overcoming for me, overcoming whatever that block is and learning about manifesting money because I believe, and this is a, this is going to be something that people be like, girl, I don't get it. Or girl, that's not whatever. But I believe that if you start thinking of money as energy, that's what I do. Money is energy and I track it to myself. Money, um, by the way, I don't look at money and success as the same thing because my dad had lots of money. I would not have called him successful. Okay, so I don't look at it as even a measurement of success. Um, if my dad had had, had made $30,000 a year and had kept the bill, bills paid, I would have called that success. Do you see what I'm saying? I would have said that was a well-rounded successful life. And if there hadn't been all of the vices and addictions and all the things, um, for me, I don't really look at money as a measurement of success. And if perhaps if you are, um, if you have those two things correlated, cause they can be easily, the world does, the world correlates wealth with success, perhaps separating the two of those, because if you have fear of success, some of you do, if you have fear of success, like, ah, leadership, what if I have to, ah, ah, I, I can't do Zoom calls, all those things, you're accidentally pumping the brakes, putting out the wrong magnet, attracting all the wrong things because of your fear of success is also working against your money attractor. Does that make sense? You're, if you've got the two things correlated, also, 
if you go around and this is something that this is a church thing if you go around being like well i don't want to be greedy i just wish if i could just have th this is where i was stuck i don't want to be greedy all i really want is just enough to pay my bills i don't want to i don't want to be greed where did i get the word where did i get the concept that i needed to be little small and poor to be holy or to be whatever whatever word you you can fill it in what you've told yourself i don't want to be greedy i just uh, da, 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 da. and it's like even people do this with their healing and this is something i know for sure for sure because sometimes god will say they only want so i'm like praying and i'll stop and say hey <laughs> what have you told yourself about this do you think that it's possible to be healed yes i'm not wanting to be greedy though and i'll say you only want what well i just want some mobility back i don't have to be completely healed i don't have to be completely pain free i just want some you know i want to be able to get out of bed without my knees hurting but i'm not trying to be greedy it's all the same mindset and i always just go i want to take them by the sh shoulders and if i know them well enough i do i say um the dude who created the universe no disrespect to the dude but the dude that created the universe can make wave his magic wand fully magic wand i'm just being funny or he can wave it halfway what are you doing why are you just asking for and or willing to accept half the enchilada why and also why am i standing here you could manifest half the enchilada like boom do you see what I'm saying? Ah, also, if there is anything in this life, I'm thinking, I'm like, I'm going over comments. If there are anything, if there's anything in this life that you don't want half the enchilada in, it would be a solid marriage. And sometimes you marry someone when you're really young and then you have to create the solid marriage because you're both like nutty. You know, that's what my marriage was. Uh, so you create the whole, the concept of a healthy marriage and you work through things together and you teammate and all this stuff. Uh, you don't want half the enchilada in your parenting, but also that is another area where you grow, you learn, make mistakes, you bump your knee, you get up and go, okay, I'm sorry, we need to, we need to regroup, talk about this, communication, whatever. The other area that you don't want to be like, two more areas that I see that are so important is your health and your finances. And I don't know where we get that hung up. And I do, I blame not the people of the church, the institution of religion for teaching me lies about itty bitty stay small girl, come here to learn what you need to know. We will tell you how to interpret all the things then okay turn around leave come back in about three or four days and then come back in three or four days more wednesdays and sundays stay small all these people who are sitting here to keep you in check and point the finger at you and maybe it was just my interpretation of what was going on there but the way i was absorbing all of that was stay small it's greedy to want wealth and i'm going to tell you right now the the greediest i ever was was when I had nothing because I was surviving. I'm not greedy at all now. Got the Midas touch going on and manifesting wealth and manifesting, like I'm in a place now where greed is not even, it's not it's something that enters my space. It, like I can I see it on people. I see greed or eh, like, eh, don't, don't, don't. But that comes from a place of lack. What she call it? Scarcity scarcity right so <laughs> I'm trying to break some things off of you with someone told me maybe a couple of years ago of all things to tell me this is such an interesting thing your stories have a breaker anointing and I'm like I don't know what that means but over time I have realized that the way I tell stories lots of times resonates with people on a level that it literally breaks things off of them. And that's what I'm attempting to do tonight. Like I believe Holy Spirit is all over what I'm saying right now, I'm sweating. <laughs> so I'm sharing with you the things that I know, sharing with you the things that I have seen that worked. 
I've not, I've not gotten where I've gotten without mistake and without, I don't really call it failure anymore. Failure and success are a to two totally different things than they, to me, than they used to be. Um, for me, resonating at a higher frequency in the way I look at other people, less judgment, because I'm going to tell you right now, judging people's motives. Uh, I wrote this down too. Do, do, do. She talked about armoring up before you go up. I'm going to show you what you do when you armor up. Imagine putting on a suit of armor while you are trying to create an energy flow that's positive. You literally block yourself from the flow by armoring up. She talks about it stifling creativity. It definitely stifles creativity, but it also blocks the flow, the magnetic flow that you are attempting to create because you're armoring up against um, vulnerability. So you're like, well, I'm going to go up there, but I am not sharing my heart with these mofos. No offense intended, but like these people are out to get me. They're going to wait to criticize me and all these things. And as you put on that armor, you are stopping the ability for that to flow. So if you're just willing to go out there, like she said, naked, I told you I did something local the other day and that was very ooh, for me where they asked me if I would come and speak at a more spiritually inclined thing and I would give a word of knowledge or something. They, like, they left it up to me. All this possibility, all this creativity, but it was local people. So I had to choose to set aside my judgments and I mostly had to choose to set aside my assumptions of how people would respond to me. And I had to go out there and just share who I am. Now that wasn't my topic, but I'm saying I spoke with passion like I do on these calls about what I decided to talk about. And I literally put myself in a way, put myself out there in a way where I knew that there was a huge possibility that the very, as soon as this thing was over, that people could be texting about me, talking about me, talking about me the next time they see someone or run into someone who knows me or see me the next time. That, it wasn't that I never thought of those things, but I had to decide. And even so, I choose courage. Even so, I created connection with a lot of people in that room by, um, metaphorically stripping down naked and showing people who I am. I decided to get out there and I told you guys, I remember walking over to my left, kicking my foot out, saying some things. I mean, I don't remember the majority of what I said, but I could feel connection. As pe I could feel as I'm talking, I, I, could, I would glance over, I'd catch an eye with someone and they, I would, people are connecting with what I'm saying. It's literally 100% Holy Spirit, but they're connecting with what I'm saying. And that is what it's like. I know what it's like to send out messages to people, to invite them to an events. I know what it's like to try new things, any new thing. I know what it's like to be ghosted. I know what it's you know like for somebody that you see the scene, they've seen it and they don't respond. I know what all of those things are like. Jennifer Leith is probably the very best person I have ever seen at, at the way that she if you need this help on this kind of stuff, the way she, that she comes back and says, Hey girl, I'm gonna ask you one more time <laughs> the way she words it. Or I totally screwed up and didn't follow up with you. Did I gosh, I'm so sorry. So the videos that, um, from a couple of weeks ago, maybe where we listened to her Monday motivation, that's a good one. Or the one where she actually jumped on the call with us from a few weeks back. If you have been struggling in the area of, I feel like people don't listen to me. I feel like no one responds to me. I would say first and foremost, change your armoring up process and don't armor up. Change your manifestation process that's underneath the arena. Tell yourself, it's going to be good this time. It's going to be great. This is, I, I'm about to establish a connection with a new friend. Um, someone is going to be interested. And as you get more comfortable with those phrases, you can be like, you can step the phrases up a notch. After you start manifesting, I'm going to tell you what, I didn't have anybody <coughs> in my everyday life to teach me these concepts. 
So I was learning these concepts from watching videos. I mean, I'm talking like YouTube videos where I'm like, okay, who's this person? They, it says that they are with, used to be with network marketing. Okay. These are old school network marketers, Amway people, Avon, Mary Kay, whatever. And they're teaching about how to message people, but no, how to go door, door to door. And I think, ah, so glad I don't have to go door to door. To door. I just told Jetty the other day, I said, you know, I was thinking about chronologically what happened in my life to make me ready for plexus. There were a multitude of things. One of the things I mentioned is I had gone to a thing where some man was teaching you how to set up a website and find, he's teaching you, he basically gave you a resource to find products. Let's say, um, whatever, home decor and set up a website and the concept of drop shipping. He based, I'd never heard of it, didn't know what it was. This is probably early, I don't know, early 2000s somewhere. And he's like, okay, so basically how this works, you decide on a theme, say home decor. And he didn't really teach um, going for a niche or a niche, but I knew because of experience in life, things I had picked up on, that if you narrow it down to a niche, like um, focusing on redheads, for example, I'm going to carry redhead merchandise that would only appeal to like 2% of the whole population. But what happens when you see redhead stuff, you always think of someone. Oh, I know who would like this. And trust me, I know this because I get tagged in all the things. I get all the stuff in the mail. I get all the things, the things, the things. People are like, she's like a rose in the bouquet of the whatever redhead phrase redhead quotes redhead 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 so i was going to call my blonde like uh, my my website strawberryblonde.com and i'm learning about drop shipping and i'm like what a concept because the reason i had never become an entrepreneur is because of my lack of ability to get things in the mail in a timely fashion some of you have been on the receiving end of that joy so okay so I was like, I do not ever need to be responsible for getting things in the mail that people have given me money for. That is something that gave me like uh, uh, feeling. So when somebody said, you can have somebody click a box, click a quantity, it sends it to a different company and they'll ship it for you. That concept was so freeing to me because I didn't want to do all the things. I didn't want to stock a warehouse full of stuff and then turn around, put, put it in an envelope, mail it out. Not me. So by the time I figured out that that's what Plexus was, is a drop ship company that already has the products picked out, already gave me a website, all these things, I was like, this is what I've been looking for. And then it took those old school videos, watching those Jim Rohn, um, probably Tony Robbins, Sarah Robbins, um, some of those people and going, okay, this is how they do this. And then tweaking it, turning it into my own. And the missing piece for a lot of it was my magnet was messed up. I had, let's say, you know, what other, a magnet's polarity and you've got your, your North and your South or your whatever, your whatever. I don't know how it goes, but my magnet was going, oh my gosh, uh, this has gone bad for me in the past. And uh, 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 uh. And that's what I was telling myself before I was actually reaching out to people. I was also not keeping in the forefront of my mind in those moments. I wasn't keeping the forefront of my mind that this might set this person free. That is a total different polarity. This might be exactly what they've been looking for. <gasps> they may have a grandkid with eczema that they have prayed and prayed, prayed and prayed for an answer for. And that causes the Christmas spirit to rise. You know what I'm talking about? Ah, and the sleigh flies, right? It's a total different way to go about the mundane, to go about the fearful, to go about the vulnerable. It changes everything. So if, to repeat Renee Brown, if courage is a value that you hold high, hold dear, then vulnerability and getting your butt kicked are two things that are certain. But on the other side of it, 
the manifestation of time freedom, also health freedom, by the way, because if, you t if you're one of those people that you go, I think I'm just tied up in knots, that's your first clue. So I'm gonna pray over us right now about that particular thing, the tied up in knots thing. And while we pray, the last part of her video, she talked about, you saved the last seat for you. And I want you to ask yourself before, while we're doing this, and be honest with yourself, because I'm not gonna ask you for your answer. But there's only one way to get on the other side of, an, of what might be causing you an issue, and that's honesty with yourself. When you look, like if that's you sitting in the arena, when you look at you and say your level of success, your level of partic participation, your level of willingness to try again, willingness to give it your best, when you look at that, at yourself in the arena, what do you see? Like, let's say this is day one, like tomorrow's a different day, but right now, let's say you're at the end of whatever this is, what you've been on, the roller coaster that you've been on emotionally. When you look and you go, yeah, over the past six months, I look at that and I see my level of participation, my level of willingness to try, my attitude, my return on investment, like however much time you put into things. Like if you are putting in hours and hours of effort, or if you're not, and then you don't, I'm not telling you that you need to change anything except for the things that you're not satisfied with. Like if you're not satisfied with it, that is something that you can change. So here we go. Been listening to that song apparently. I'm gonna turn down a little bit. So this uh by the way, all the things that I get on here and talk about with you guys, it's been a process sharing it with you guys things about like whole tones vibration frequency i'm about to tell you the name of this song is called the bridge and it vibrates at 639 hertz i wish i had it memorized so that i could tell you exactly what part of your body is resonating at the tone of the song that we're listening to i don't have it memorized i want to tell you something really quick did you know that you can go into a music store and I'm going to use the word G-string, but it's the actual guitar G-string, not the panties. If you go into a music store and you pluck the G or whatever, one of the strings, every guitar, every stringed instrument that has a G string will begin to, that string will begin to resonate. And that is, it's just the flipping truth that like attracts like frequency causes frequency they say when i went to the healer in california a few years ago she said if your thyroid's giving you trouble you probably need to spend time intentionally like with the intention of with someone who has a, a perfectly activated thyroid to trip the trigger on your thyroid and tell it to wake up and I'm like, what, 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 by the way, sharing this kind of stuff with you guys, it makes me sweat because I put myself out there in a way where you could go, girl, she knew age. She weird. She doing something. I don't think that's in the Bible. They don't talk about a guitar string. No, no, no. Uh, I never heard that before. I've never heard about the thyroid and the thyroid. I look at all of that stuff and I go, that is the wonder and miraculous of God. I don't see it any other way. I used to though. The church I was in had taught me to look at it different. Now I go, oh my gosh. Like when you are spending time with people, let's say, let's call the strings high vibration and low vibration. If you spend time with people whose string that they pluck all the time is 
before long, that's the string you're resonating on to. If you need a boost, you either have to talk with your friends and say, hey, we got to try something else. We got to give something else a shot here because this, like I'm, I'm picturing, I'm picturing um, friendships that I've had in the past. I'm talking about 10 years ago, whatever. Um, relationships. I'll, I'll use my sister and I, cause then you can get a clear picture of what I'm talking about where I, I've told you guys before where we were gossipy, sarcasm, all the things. And we, I literally had an epiphany, maybe watching a video or something. And I told her, I had to say, look, I'm taking a challenge. I want you to do this with me cause you're my person. I want to, I want that to still be, you know, like I, I'm not going to like run away from because I was as guilty as she was. And I'm like, but are you willing to resonate at a higher frequency with me? And so instead of, instead of armoring up with our insecurities before we go eat lunch together and being like, we can walk in, look at these skinny bitches. I don't like them anyway. Eat a Chinese burger. Okay. Whatever the low vibration of what we were putting out because of our insecurities, walking in somewhere, seeing people that we know that we might like, might not like, and the condescending, and we're not really saying this stuff to people. We're not that bold. We're just crazy enough. We're just tick, 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 tick. Did you see those stupid shoes she's wearing? Yeah. <laughs> I'm being very honest, very honest. And so as, as we took this challenge, so many things started to be like, oh, this is so different. This is so different. Things are so different. Like the things I'm attracting into my life are different. The things that I'm doing in my life are different. The things I'm manifesting are different because I didn't want, I didn't want my sister and I to go different directions. I wanted us to go the same direction. And we did. We chose to do it together. We had to set our insecurities aside and walk into a restaurant without the armor and just be like, how are you today? Good to see you. Good to see you too. And try our best not to be like, <sighs> as we walked away, right? From a person that we did or didn't like. And the more you do that, the more you realize how silly and ridiculous it was in the first place. The more you undo it, I should say. The more you undo that. The more you go, I don't know why I ever did that. That person is so nice. They, they might have mirrored for me what I was expecting in those moments when I was getting the yeek from them. Mirror. Y'all, I'm sweating, sweating, sweating. So, so right now, this is going to be individual for each of you because I know as I'm talking, certain things are popping up in your head and resonating and you're like, oh yeah, that makes me think of this. Makes me think of this. It makes me think of this. I need to let go of this. I probably need to not watch. Maybe you're, there's a show that you watch that's it. Maybe there's something that um, someone you're spending a lot of time with that you need to take a challenge with, or maybe not, you know, depends on, depends on the connection and why, right? Maybe you need to spend more time um, prayerful, gratitude, focusing on those type of things, because I will tell you the number one thing that I see happen to people. I don't know that it happens until they start talking to me and tell me, Hey, I've got this going on. This is what's going on. I'm a little bit concerned about this. And I ask them, how much time do you spend on social media? That's one of my number one questions now. Um, especially mind numbing time. Oh yeah. Well you go, but I'm not, you know, I'm not like doing anything. I'm not doing anything on sales. I'm not like being negative or whatever, but the inner chat with yourself as you scroll. Okay. Like I'm just going to open up Facebook and give you some examples. I'll try to pick people that nobody would know. So I'm reading something and I'm like, da 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 da. And I'm like, yeah. Why would she, why would she wear that? Uh, She's always talking about 
We get it. Your daughter's a cheerleader. Yeah. Okay, if if any of that is part of your like while you're trying to numb, you're actually doing a lot of comparison and that kind of thing, you either need to limit yourself from Facebook or social media in general. Or you need to figure out a way to not be that way. Challenge yourself. Because I'm going to tell you what, habits are habits because it's what you do. When you change what you do, you change your habits. So I'm not criticizing any of these things except for that I know that they're harmful for you. If I was talking to my daughter, I'd be saying the same thing. It's out of love. So I'm like, if you're like, yeah, ugh. yeah, she's a, yeah. Uh, yeah. if you have any of that going on, because maybe your own life is crappy or you feel like your own life is crappy, take the challenge I'm sticking out there right now to intentionally, it has to be intentional in the beginning. Oh yeah, this is the son of the, of the people that are moving in next door. He does post funny stuff sometimes. I kind of thought he was a douche in high school, but maybe... He seems like a nice guy. Huh. Yeah, that's kind of essential oils. Honestly, I don't know a lot about essential oils. Maybe I should follow her a little bit more. She seems to know a lot about that kind of stuff. I'm going to put, I'm going to change my notification settings on her stuff. Oh yeah. Oh, I haven't checked that group in a long time. Oh, I don't think I should. There's probably a lot of stuff. I'll feel overwhelmed and I'll feel behind if I go in there. No, I'm going to go in there and see what's going on. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Oh, that's tomorrow. Okay. I'm going to set an alarm in my phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> By the way, these are real things I'm seeing. I'm just saying. Um, oh, shoot. I hadn't seen her in a while. Hey girl, hadn't seen you in a while. How have you been? Yeah. Okay, different tone. Intentionally, Inten an intentional different tone. And I'm gonna tell you right now, even if I wasn't responding to people, I'm putting out a different magnet. Even if they don't know that I am because I'm not creating an assumption loop that might be the death of my business. I'm not putting out an assumption hologram and here I get on here and I share all these words with you guys that you might be like, mm, set out the alarm for her because she's got all these weird words that she used. That's where I was headed earlier when I was like, I have to be vulnerable with, vulnerable with you guys every single week because I could have shut off all the things I'm learning about attraction. And I could have just like, for me, like I apply those things. I have this Midas thing going on but I can't share it with them because what if they go in blank? What if they think this and say this and whatever? What if, what if, what if? So right now, I want you to evaluate for yourself. What is it that really I want gone? What do I want free from? I'm gonna give you like, I'm literally gonna give you a few seconds. I'm gonna change the song because I'm feeling a change. Here we go. What do you feel that you need? Now, okay, I'm gonna take Becky's example because this is honest and vulnerable. She said, I want free from failure. So I'm going to take that example and we're going to think of an, the opposite word of, of failure that is not success. I think success can also ring in people's ears and make them hot in not a good way. I don't know. Da, 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 da. I'm not ready for da, 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 da. what comes with all that. I don't know. Unknown. So let's think of another word besides success that would be the opposite of failure. Um, let's take think of an action word. That would be like willingness to try. And so right now, with all the power vested in me as a 
child of a one true king and made in his image, we choose to, as an act of our will, to both ask for and receive the breaking off of a spirit or any agreements that we may have with failure, lack, the wrong side of comparison, any of that stuff. And we pin to ourself godly creativity and willingness to jump back in and try. And you've got the three chord strand here. We got agreements from every direction, from every point on the map. People who root for you and believe with you for a manifestation of a brighter tomorrow than today was and a brighter day after that. We break all agreements in the spirit and in the physical with negative, you know, anything that's uh, low in vibration. And we come out of agreement with any of that. And instead, we come into your agreement with God's purpose for our life and willingness to move forward and put, even if it's something that seems mundane in the beginning and it's just, okay, all I know to do is put one foot in front of the other. First, we take our armor off, <laughs> at least the armor uh, that we would normally use, and we choose instead to put on the armor of God. Not the armor of, uh, I guess it would be sort of something like insecurity is what I used to feel when I'd be in that under the arena place. Take that off. We put on the full armor of God and his truth and his purpose. They walk into the bright light. Willingness to be, I mean, we know, like I said, willingness to get our butt kicked, but with hope for a better for something better. With hope for better statistics than one in ten. Like not just hope, but belief for statistics that are better than one in ten, ten will respond, one in ten will whatever. Nope, I don't believe that. We pin godly integrity to us in our posts. We, we pin Holy Spirit creativity in the things that we say to our audience. We, we pin Holy Spirit creativity to the things that we say in Messenger. And even godly insight into who might be ready for what we have to offer and who might be needing what we have to offer and even for timing, godly timing. I'm on a roll. Anybody else want to give me one? God, right now we just thank you. We lift up our open heartedness to you, Lord. Um, our, I say we lift up our, what we have viewed as brokenness. Lift up what we have viewed as brokenness and give it to you, Lord. You're the one that can make a puzzle for, you know, like turn the puzzle, turn the pieces into an actual puzzle. Freedom from financial struggle. I'm going to share this one now. So, okay, let's first figure out, this is how I go about things. Let's figure out what would be the opposite of financial struggle. We would say freedom and independence. And first I have to ask you if either one of those words give you scary feelings. If they do, they won't be the manifestors you're wanting. Okay, starting over, getcha. Okay, so Freedom from financial struggle. Let's say independence and financial freedom. And let's say, let's turn the phrase, the story that I have to start over. Let's trade that phrase for a fresh start. A creative, fresh start. It doesn't have to be over, starting over. Right now, in Jesus' name, we just break off if there is a spirit or any kind of agreement that you have made with financial struggle broken in Jesus' name. 
And instead we come into agreement with freedom, independence, financial prosperity, the ability to thrive. Actual thriving, not just the ability to thrive, but thriving. And we just lift up gratitude for one foot in front of the other in this fresh start. Maybe you should write it on your mirror. Freedom, fresh, new. Freedom from judgment from starting over. God, right now we just come out of agreement with any judgments that we have placed on other people. We repent for those. And we come out of agreement with that feeling that makes us feel connected to judgment, comparison. And I just pin fresh, creative strategies on you right now, Monica. We choose as an act of our will to both ask for and receive a fresh, creative, start even if it's starting in the middle you know if you if you feel like you're on a track and you've sat down get up <laughs> get up <laughs> get up and get ready and go don't armor up if you're going to armor up armor up with god's armor don't armor up with all this i can't be vulnerable vulnerability is where we connect with people honesty truth I'm going to recommend right now another Brene Brown, uh, maybe her first TED Talk. If somebody correct me if this is not right, but the one where she's talking about shame, vulnerability, I think it may be her first TED Talk. It's different than that one that we just listened to, where she really talks about connection and how we know when we're looking for a friend, we know to look for vulnerability but then it's the last thing we want to feel about ourselves because I'm going to be like, ah, I got to be strong. I need to be strong. I don't want to be vulnerable because we equate vulnerability with weakness, but vulner uh, vulnerability is actually showing your strength. When I can get on here and share from my heart things that I know have helped people without, the, uh, by the way, there's not that there's not, a concern that there might be judgment on the words that I use, the way that I say things, uh, practices that I have put in place. There's not that there's no chance that someone's not going to go behind my back and call me uh, things that would not be kind. There's not that that chance that that is not a possibility, but I have to choose to rise above that in order to manifest the life that I want. Right now, in Jesus' name, I just, I just send a wave of, of wealth, of, a wealth of wellness over you, Shalina. Comfort. I just send a wave of comfort over you right now. May Holy Spirit fire fall on every one of your organs, every joint, all of your connective tissues, every glandular system that you have, may the frequency of perfected health be all over you right now in Jesus' mighty name. Got a little dizzy. <laughs> God, right now, just like a whoosh over her. From the top of her head, may it just like melt down on her. comfort, relief. I'm going to tell you a little thing I start, I try to do when I'm wanting to, when I'm in manifestation mode, which by the way, we always are all day long. We're manifesting might not be good. It depends on what you're doing, whether you're manifesting, you know, the things you want. I'll put it that way. I've tried to remove from my vocabulary things that are, for example, I'm not saying I never talk about these things, but when I am 
speaking things over myself. If I say I am this, I am that, I want this, I want that. Um, I'm just using your example, Shalina. You are you're being honest and vulnerable and telling me what you and you're sharing. So uh, this is not at all a criticism, but this is something that I have decided to employ to try not to use words like pain. Um, so it's tricky. It can be tricky to figure out a way to say, I want freedom from pain. And you're doing exactly what I asked you to do. So even if you knew this principle already, you did what I asked you to do. So I want freedom from pain and health issues. So um, for your own self, when you are manifesting, not using the word pain. So instead, uh, I am comfort. I am relief. I am free. I am forgiving. I am love. I am whatever, rather than, um, even rather than the word pain free, because even that pain has the word pain in it. I know that seems like just chick, 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 same thing, but I really believe and practice the best I can. Practicing looks like practicing, by the way. I'm not going to say I'm perfect at it at all, but I try not to say pain in regards to myself. I try not to call someone a pain in my butt. I try not to call someone a pain in my neck. I try not to use the word, I hardly ever do use that word. I try not to use that word. And I'm, I'm just teaching here. I hope you guys know that I'm not criticizing at all. Um, also, let's come out of any agreements that any of us might have with shame. Shame is, ah, you know, it can be so intense. And lots of times it comes with um, its own baggage and it comes from, it, can, it can come from childhood. It's something that I have had to overcome in my life. Um, coming out of agreements with shame. So right now, if you think you have, if you have something going on in your life uh, where you feel that you may carry around shame, it's, it's um, tip, typically very um, part of a female human conditioning and I don't want to be part of that conditioning. I don't want to be shaking hands with that. So if that is something that you feel in your spirit that you'd like broken off with you right now, as part of your brokenness, even as an, a prophetic act, just lifting that up to heaven right now, and just saying, God, this is baggage. I don't want to partner with it anymore. I don't want to have agreements with it anymore. In Jesus' name. Literally, broken. Break it like spaghetti. Stomp it on the ground. And instead, I want to partner with trying to think what would be the word for opposite of shame opposite i mean it feels like a freedom type word a release type word does anybody know what the opposite of would of that would be yeah uplifted unchained but we don't want to say chained we don't even want to say unchained joy yes right now i just say that we restore our joy center. We have a joy center in our body right now in Jesus name. We just come into agreement with restored joy, restored bliss. For some of us, it may not even feel like we're restoring it. We may feel like we never had it. And so we just choose it. Like if you're going to reach up, if you're going to read up, reach up in the heaven candy shop and we say, I want joy. I am joy. I embody joy. Whatever in anything that in my body that has been vibrating at a frequency that is out of tune with the joy string. God, we ask you to magnificently pluck it. New string. May my vo body vibrate. May may I vibrate at a level of joy and even higher. Restore me. 
Yes. Thank you, God. Any agreements that I have made with lack, any agreements that I have made with poverty or willingness to accept less, Well, you know, if you're healing, for example, if you're like, well, I don't want to be greedy or with your financials, I don't want to be greedy, but how about we don't even use the word greedy anymore? How about we take that from our vocabulary and just, it's not an option anymore to use that word. And instead, God, I am a giver. I have so much to give. I am a giver. I have so much to offer. Your vocabulary changing is everything. I'm a giver. I'm a sharer. I'm a believer. I resonate with the truth of giving. Giving from a place of joy. Giving from a place, not a place of need, but a place of joy. A joyful giver. Yes. So even talking to yourself, because she's sharing that she's like, my vocabulary is mostly inner speak. I get that because it's like a, it can be like a, a record going off in your head. And so you have to basically, you have to retrain yourself like you're a puppy. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to go stop that, <laughs> you know? Okay. I am joy. I am restoration. I'm beauty. I'm love. I'm comfort. I'm relief. I am vulnerability. That's a strength word. It seems like it's not, but I am vulnerability. I'm willing. I'm healer. And by the way, not ashamed. I don't want to say the word ashamed, but I'm not. I'm radically changed and radically in tune with the Holy Spirit. I'm radically in tune with the Holy Spirit. Each, each layer of my body is radically in tune with the Spirit of God. Every layer of my body, every layer of my being, every layer of the energy outside my body, is radically in tune and connected to the Spirit of God. I'm made in His image. I am, I am. I am truth. I am wholeness. I want some of you to write down some of these words. I want to thank you guys for hopping on here tonight. I declare and decree a mark of what your life was like before this Zoom. And then there's a mark. And then starting even, I'm not even talking about tomorrow, when you get off of here tonight, starting refreshed, renewed, go take a shower. If you haven't white, literally rinse off the old talking about anything that you've made agreements with, do a prophetic act. If you've already showered, go in there and literally just say, I don't have agreements with that. I am whole. I am healed. I'm truth. I'm vibrant. I am attractive in the marketplace. I am financial freedom. I am the Midas touch. It's weird. Like I would have never been bold enough to say those things until it manifested, manifested back then. But now I don't go around telling people, y'all, I'm the Midas touch. But I tell Jetty all the time, basically manifested that. We basically manifested that. Um, our business is basically spiritual. Uh, I think he would agree with that. True? Jed man? 
I am happily married. Yes. Says yes. And so it is. We lift this all up in Jesus name. Thanks for hopping on here tonight, guys. I will get this loaded as soon as possible. But guess what? You subscribe to my YouTube channel so you'll see it when it loads. You guys have a great night. Love you all. See you next week.